God's original plan for the people of Israel was that he would be their king, that they would look to him for guidance and for protection in their life in the promised land. However, as the people clamored for a king, God relented to their voice and appointed Saul as the first king of all the people of Israel. However, Saul had some significant mistakes. He didn't abide by the commandments of the Mosaic law. He didn't obey the direct commands of God. And he was seemingly swayed by his jealousy, his anger, and his fear of the people, and especially of David. And so God took the kingdom from Saul and gave it to another, a shepherd boy from the tribe of Judah. And in this video, we cover the life of the most important, exemplary, and iconic king of Israel, King David. So thank you for joining with us today. And please subscribe to this channel, like this video, or share it with a friend if it's of any interest to you. It helps get the word out further around. And now let's explore the life of King David. After Saul's fall from grace, Samuel is commanded to go to the house of Jesse to anoint one of his sons. David, the youngest of the eight sons of Jesse, is described in 1 Samuel 16. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. After the Spirit of God correspondingly departs from Saul, he is afflicted by an evil spirit. And ironically, David, being renowned as a gifted musician, is called to play music in the court of Saul. This soothes him in his vexation, and this is the first contact between David and Saul. David soon rises astonishingly to prominence, however. As the Philistines again come against the people of Israel, their champion Goliath calls any brave Israelite to fight him in one-on-one -on -one combat. David, hearing these words, is indignant that he would mock the people of the Lord. And though he is but a young shepherd, he persuades Saul to let him battle Goliath. Famously, David fells Goliath with a single stone of his sling. And defeating him, the Philistines all scatter. Thereafter, David is given a command and he wins victory after victory. And in these triumphs, he is acclaimed and adored by the people, much to the jealousy of Saul. Already in these first few chapters on David's life, we see some of his primary roles. He is a shepherd of humble origins, yet willing to fight to protect his sheep. He is a musician gifted with song and instruments. And he is a man of war, able to lead the people into victory. And two, in these first chapters in 1 Samuel, we see some of David's prominent qualities as well. He is bold and courageous, willing to take on one much greater than he. He is passionate in responding to the defense of God's people. He is deeply faithful in God, trusting that God will deliver him and giving thanks after victory. And he is humble aware of his low origin, and commensurately thanking God for God's blessings. As David grows in preeminence, however, so does Saul's jealousy. Saul's anger consumes him, and he eventually pursues David, seeking to take his life. David evades Saul, living in the wilderness and even craftily among their mutual enemies. Eventually, in another great war with the Philistines, Saul falls in battle, and thereafter, David is raised up, anointed as king. A brief period of division here follows, where one of Saul's descendants, Ishbosheth, is made king of the ten northern tribes known as Israel. After a few years, he is overthrown by his own people, however, and David is made king over both the ten northern tribes of Israel as well as the two southern tribes of Judah. And after this, David consolidates his kingdom. He is praised and acclaimed by his people. He conquers the city of Jerusalem 
and makes it his capital, and he brings up the ark to dwell in his new city. David then enjoys an unbroken series of victories over his enemies. In struggles with Philistia, the Syrians, Edom, Moab, Amalek, and others, David wins at every turn. And much of David's success is owed to his consultation with God, where he listens when God tells him when and when not to fight. And too, David acknowledges God after the battles. The story of his life is filled with extended psalms and expressions of praise, and filled too with lament at the wrong and the loss that he encounters. In these ways, David is a model king, faithful to God, leading the people to success, beloved by the people, and enjoying the blessings of God. However, here at the height of his success, David commits a major mistake that changes the whole trajectory of his kingship. One day, while on his rooftop, he sees a lady splish-splash taking a bath, Bathsheba. He is taken by her beauty, and he calls her to lay with him. She is, however, married to one of his most valiant men, Uriah. Bathsheba becomes pregnant, and David calls Uriah back from battle and tries to persuade him to spend a night with his wife. However, Uriah, a righteous man, does not yield to King David's promptings. And returning to battle, David conspires to have Uriah killed. After all transpires and Uriah is dead, David takes Bathsheba to be his wife and she bears him a son. However, this, of course, greatly displeases the Lord. David's prophet Nathan confronts him, and acknowledging his guilt, David falls down in contrition. And God's curse through Nathan includes these words, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thereafter, the child born to Bathsheba becomes sick. And after days of David pleading with God, the child dies. The troubles within David's house, according to the curse, continue. David's first son, Amnon, forces his stepsister Tamar. And one of David's other sons, Absalom, after waiting a couple years, takes his revenge by taking the life of Amnon. Absalom goes into exile for several years and is eventually brought back to Jerusalem. However, over time, he steals the hearts of the people and begins a full-scale rebellion, driving David from Jerusalem. David flees as he did before Saul. The kingdom is divided again, and all-out civil war ensues. In this struggle, David and his men prevail. However, his rebellious son Absalom dies in the battle. David laments the loss of his son pitiably with these famous words. O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. After these sad series of events, David returns mournfully to Jerusalem. He pardons those who had conspired against him Yet another rebellion in Israel erupts almost immediately, which, fortunately, David's men contain. As time proceeds, David makes another mistake, however. He commands a census of all the people of Israel and Judah. This displeases God, however, and the consequence is a great pestilence among the people. Previous censuses of the people were commanded by God, and it was unlawful to count what was not one's own. And the people bear the punishment for what could be David's pride. And in his old age, David's troubles continue, as another one of his sons leads another rebellion along with many of his trusted officials. David's son Adonijah proclaims himself king, but David shrewdly avoids war by naming Solomon king in his place. The rebelling offenders quickly yield and beg David's forgiveness. 
these latter years are filled with conflict, bitterness, and strife, the consequence of David's significant sins. David is nonetheless a model king. Favored of God and faithful to him, he leads the people brilliantly. But at the height of his powers, he gives in to his passions and brings bitterness on his house and his people. God remains faithful by continuing the kingdom through David's house. But much suffering ensues, and David dies a somewhat tired, bereaved man. In his time, and for centuries after, David is nonetheless looked up to as an exemplary king. He brilliantly demonstrates the qualities of boldness, of courage, faithfulness in God, a love of righteousness, ability to lead the people. David is remembered as well as being a gifted musician. The story of his life is shot through with references to song, dancing, and music. At several points in his story, a song is sung to give thanks, to lament, or to acknowledge God for his victories for the people. And David is regarded as a renowned composer as well. Of the 150 psalms, 73 bear his name, many alluding to specific instances in his life. Now, whether David composed all these psalms, or whether some were written for him or in his memory, is of some debate. But later in the scriptures, in Acts 4 and Hebrews 4, David is identified as the author of two additional psalms. And while it's arguable whether he penned every one himself, he did indeed make extensive provisions for musicians in the worship of God. And David is significant, too, in his foreshadowing of the Messiah. While his successors always look back to David as a model king, the prophets also look forward to a Messiah in the image of King David. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel all look back to David as a model for the Messiah to come. And the importance of King David continues into the New Testament, where there are 59 references to this important king. All of them refer to the person or the lineage of David or to specific instances in his life to teach especially who Jesus is as the son of David, the king after the kind of David, the long-awaited Messiah. So while David's later life was filled with troubles as a result of his own sins, he nonetheless played a central role in the messianic expectations of the next thousand years fulfilled in the person of Jesus. And the words and the music he left continue to be a devotional resource for Christians around the world today. In our next video, we look at the life of David's son and successor, Solomon. But thank you very much for joining with us in this survey of King David's life. Please, again, feel free to like or share this video or subscribe to this channel. And we'll look forward to seeing you again. Until then, may God bless you.